my slippers. I got to explain this to you. They are exclusive three tier cushioning system. It's like walking on clouds, right? We took the my pillow patented foam, the one that you know and love, and they created a solid layer to provide incredible comfort. Don't forget to use the promo code Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R, and you will receive 40% off of your my slippers. Your whole family is going to love it. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Association of Mature American Citizens. I love this organization. It's the only conservative alternative to AARP, folks. The only conservative alternative to AARP. Go to amac.us slash Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R. So today we're going to be talking about something very, very important, something that should matter to every single one of you, and that is censorship. And that is what is happening in the United States right now. And the reason why former President Trump is filed a major lawsuit against Google, Twitter, and Facebook. These behemoth organizations, we've never seen anything like it on the face of the earth. We really haven't. We don't even know how to deal with this. What we do know is that they're stifling our ability to speak to one another, to tell the truth. Although the platforms were meant to connect people, They are pushing their own narrative. And that is what I'm going to be talking about today on this podcast and why we all need to be paying attention to what President Trump has done. I mean, for the most part, he may just be exposing what happens. We don't know where these lawsuits will lead. I don't even know how you fight Google, Facebook, or Twitter. They've got more money than I think anybody has ever had on the planet, right? So this is a huge endeavor. This is a huge endeavor to go after these massive organizations, these corporate organizations that have really altered and changed the way we see ourselves, we see the world, and by the way, our own nation. And I think that's very, very important. I think that's something we got to pay a lot of attention to. But before I get started with the show, I want you to go to sarahacarter.com. That's sarahacarter.com. And while you're there, I want you to sign up. I want you to sign up for my email list because the most important thing is that you do not get shadow banned. The most important thing is that we're able to communicate with one another. And I'm very serious about this. This is not just something that we're saying. This is not just some kind of idea that's going to wash away in a year or two and everybody's going to balance out. I really, truly believe that these corporations, along with people in our government, are stymieing the way we communicate with one another. And they're changing the way we operate with one another. And that's really frightening. But if you go to sarahcarter.com and you sign up for our email list, I promise you that we will get those stories out to you ASAP. And we won't bombard you every week. Just go there, get onto the social media, and I'll get those emails to you. So where do we start? I think we're just going to have to start with the lawsuit. And I'm going to fill you in as we go along because this is so important. President Trump announced that he is filing a lawsuit against Google, Twitter, and Facebook. Now, a lot of people thought that President Trump was going to get on Getter or some new platform or that he was going to, I even thought for a moment, like maybe he's going to create his own platform and he's going to push that out there. No, I think the first thing he's doing is going to target, you know, and expose, and this is what he's good at. He's really great at marketing. Now, some people like USA Today and other Um, editorials have said, look, this is a Trump stunt. He's just trying to drive attention to himself. Uh, This is a way of marketing it out there um, to, to the people that follow him and helping build his, I guess, repertoire before the 2024 uh, elections, presidential elections, and his influence in that because he's lost influence, obviously, on Facebook and in Twitter and in Google because they basically shadow banned him. Not beyond that, they've just pushed him out altogether. Facebook, at least for several years, is not going to let him back on the platform. That's just incredible to me that a president of the United States of America will not be allowed back on the platform. I want you to hear this. This is from his Q&A with reporters. This is Trump taking questions on the announcement of his lawsuit. What is the possibility of a settlement prior to trial? Because obviously any court ruling in your favor, and you've laid out a very compelling case, anything prior to a court ruling would certainly limit the rest, everybody else who's not in the class. We're not looking for a settlement. We don't expect a settlement. 
Uh, they fight and they fight hard. She, they've never had anything like this. That's right. They fight and they fight hard. They're not expecting a settlement in this. In fact, I would love to join this class action lawsuit because there's things that we have actually seen happen um, on my website, sarahcarter.com, stories that they have basically punished us for that were accurate stories that they didn't want out there. And I believe that that's a violation of my rights and my ability to communicate. And think of the power that Google has with our advertisers, with our advertising dollars and Facebook and Twitter. I mean, basically, if they shadow ban you, if they shut you down, you can end up having no business at all. And of course, that isn't a legal argument. That isn't a legal argument because we can't use, for example, their business to build our business. But the difference is, is that they have actually changed the way people have conducted business in this world. So it's kind of a morphing of several factors. And beyond business, it's our ability for freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. One of the most interesting guests I've ever had on the show is Brandon Carr. And he was with the Federal Communications Commission, but I'll never forget what he said to me on the show. He was saying that they weaponized, they being, you know, Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, Sundar Pachai, all of these tech giants, they basically weaponized their platforms and utilized those social media platforms to direct the American people. And he was saying that they did that specifically since the 2016 election. Because they were so enraged, and we heard that. We've, you know, seen the videos out there of Sundar Pichai and, you know, people at Google that were so upset when President Trump won. They were so upset about the fact that the American people put President Trump into office and strayed away from that establishment that they went in the opposite direction. They said, okay, now we've got to hone in. We've got to stop, basically. Uh, anybody from propagating any kind of narrative that we don't agree with because they actually believe they know what's best for you. They don't think you can make your own decisions. They actually believe they know what's best for you. Think about that. They want to take away, and these are the leftist, these are those radicals, and yes, I'm putting Jack Dorsey into that pile of radicals that's out there and Mark Zuckerberg, you know, they don't mind making all their money. They don't mind capitalism for themselves. They don't mind it because they've amassed billions, hundreds of billions of dollars and enormous power with that. And more than just power, information, they control information. They can basically listen, you know, I mean, look with the FBI and the intelligence community, they can listen in on what you're doing. What we're seeing is a weaponization of tools that we've never seen before, right? This is, it's not just America, folks. This is a global issue, not even just a national issue. Think about the power that these corporations possess with their ability to control the narrative. And this is how they do it. This is how they do it. No, you've all been seeing this. Not only did they throw the president off of these platforms because they didn't like what he was saying. He's no threat to anyone at all. This is all made up in their head. It's a disinformation campaign. Remember the whole Russia hoax? Yes, the one that nobody ever paid the price for. Um, Andy McCabe was fired. James Comey was fired. Uh, a ton of people at the FBI were fired, including the general counsel, James Baker. Rod Rosenstein was going to invoke the 25th Amendment on the president. You had people within the White House and the establishment like freaking out because they wanted what they wanted was the old ways. They didn't want anyone rocking the boat and they didn't want some outsider peeking underneath their seriously screwed up curtain, their screwed up eyes to see the little guy in the back on a little scooter spinning around because that's all it is. These people use us. They use the American people. They like it up there. Doesn't it ever occur to you, too, that they have so much money in their pockets? You think about think about how much money they have when they come into Congress and how much they have when they leave, right? How these people become millionaires or, or presidents. You know, they come in and they're just the average Joe and they leave and eventually they're, you know, multimillionaires, right? Well, think about the people that lobby them. And believe me, it's Google it's Facebook, it's Twitter, it, you know, Jeff Bezos with the Washington Post, 
although now he wants to go to space and compete against Elon Musk. Good luck. Um, you know, it's these type of folks, right? So it's all fine and dandy when they make money, when they make their own decisions. It's not when we do it, right? It's not when we make those decisions or when we decide to put someone in office like President Trump. That didn't that doesn't seem to fly with them. So then they're able to break all the rules, right? Step all over the Constitution, direct the narrative. And what they do is they bully. You know, they talk about not bullying, that big bullying campaign, and they're always worried about people being bullied. Well, all Twitter does, all Facebook does, all Google does is bully people. They bully us into doing what they want, or they will remove us from their platform. They bully us into thinking and pushing their ideas, or they will remove us from their platform. That is what they do. Not only do they do that, they ostracize and they allow people to tell lies about people. Do you notice how they protect Hunter Biden? It's pretty obvious. He's a crack smoking, you know, sad case of a man, you know, snorting cocaine off of pro naked prostitutes with the most crazy pictures and videos inside, yes, his laptop. Oh, and the fact that he lined his pockets with money from China and Russia, which, by the way, lined the pockets of Joe Biden, our president now of these United States. But everyone protects Hunter Biden. Everyone protects President Biden. Remember CNN with all those ridiculous videos of that one block that um, Joe Biden rode his bike on? That was all you could see. And CNN even admitted in a Project Veritas, you know, guerrilla warfare journalism type of thing, when they caught that guy saying, oh, yeah, we tried to make, you know, Joe Biden look, this uh, CNN editor, top executive, we tried to make him look really healthy and happy because we wanted him to win. We didn't want Trump to win. So everything's set up. So no wonder the American people do not trust the media, do not trust the social media platforms, and are wondering, well, what the hell's going on? How can this be the United States of America? How did we get to this point? As a journalist, when I was actually covering for newsprint, when I wasn't on Fox or when I didn't write columns, when I was actually a newsprint journalist, my job was to collect the information and just tell the story and let the American people decide what's right and wrong for them. That's, that's our job. But now you put Don Lamont on and, you know, and he he acts like he's a journalist. He he doesn't act like an entertainer or an opinion maker. He tries to pretend he's a journalist, but he's not. He's not a journalist at all. He laughs and insults President Trump. He he never follows the news. You got Jim Acosta on CNN. You got Rachel Maddow, although Rachel Maddow is more of an opinionist. I'll give her that. She can have that. She can own it. I'm okay with that because anybody who likes her can watch her. I don't have a problem with that. But look at Don Lamont or Jim Acosta. Jim Acosta lives for just drawing attention to himself, right? But all of these people work in concert. They work in concert with these social media platforms. I want you to listen to um, Jack Dorsey who says censorship effort is is just is beyond just Trump. It's it's everything. Jack Dorsey thinks he knows what's best for you. Listen to this. We are focused on one account right now, but this is going to be much bigger than just one account. And it's going to go on for much longer than just this day, this week, the next few weeks. It's going to go on beyond the inauguration. We have to expect that. We have to be ready for that. Dorsey thinks he knows what's best for you. Come on. Have some common sense. This is crazy. We are allowing these corporations to take control of our lives, to tell us who we are, what we are, what we should do. And a lot of us are afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid we're going to be ostracized if we stand up to them. Remember when they were basically targeting anybody and everybody who talked about COVID? If it wasn't stay safe, stay healthy, wear triple masks, you were banned. You were banned. If you wrote a story about hydroxychloroquine, if you questioned Dr. Anthony Fauci, if you just even talked about the China virus or the Wuhan virus, or you questioned if it came out of a lab, those directives by the social media platforms, by their CEOs, to whoever is monitoring, by the way, at Facebook, there are people actually Chinese citizens 
that are actually monitoring our communications. They work for Facebook. I guess they would know a lot about censorship since they worked for uh, Facebook and they uh, belong to the CCP, right? To the Chinese Communist Party. That's pretty interesting. But think about it. Think about it. It's those people. It's people that that are running these corporations that are actually trying to direct our lives. But we have to say, why? Who are they doing it for? This is like fascism. This isn't America. This isn't who we are. This is, this is beyond anything I could ever imagine happening in our nation. And before I go any further, I want to talk to you a little bit about Tommy John. It's fantastic. You know, summer is heating up. No sweat. If you're wearing the new Apollo men's underwear from Tommy John, it looks so fantastic on you men. Uh, my husband has a bunch of them. Apollo is Tommy John's newest and most advanced men's underwear, yet with a performance grade dry release fabric blend that is exclusive to Tommy John. Apollo men's underwear is proven to keep you drier and up to seven degrees cooler than regular cotton underwear. Perfect for summer, right guys? Get some of those Apollo men's underwear. Got a cool name on that too. Um, right now, get 20% off your first order at tommyjohn.com slash Carter. If you go to tommyjohn.com and you put in the offer word, which is Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R, -E go to tommyjohn.com slash Carter for 20% off tommyjohn.com slash Carter. See the site for details. You know, so many people are afraid right now to talk about what they feel and to talk about their political ideas. But we've also seen a rise in people actually doing that, right? Critical race theory at schools. We're seeing parents in like Loudoun County, Virginia, standing up and saying, you know what, no more. I don't want this in my schools. You need to tell me exactly what's going on here. We've seen parents actually getting arrested or taken out of the school and school boards shutting down because they've actually decided to stand up and fight for their children and say no more. I got to tell you, I this is crazy. Um, you know, I have a foundation. It's the Dark Wire and Investigation Foundation. And one of the writers that's working for me said that at a school district, it's actually her younger sister's school district in California. I'm not going to say her name because I don't know if she wants me talking about this publicly, but at her younger sister's school district in California, the sex education classes were so out of control that her family had to go and basically protest to the school board. And I said, well, what do you mean? What, what are you talking about? What's going on there? And she said, well, it's crazy. They've given, if for eight years old and over, these, uh, like, basically they look like a ditto sheet. She sent me a copy. I don't know if you guys remember that. But they're like a, basically just a black and white sheet with, like, pictures, cartoon pictures. But listen to what these cartoon pictures are. There are two women sleeping in bed having sex. I mean, naked on top of each other. There's two men. Um, there's all kinds of very um, lewd poses. Um, and they're telling children that this is perfectly normal and fine. And this is a normal, everyday thing. That's okay. But you saying that you supported President Trump is absolutely wrong, right? That's okay. But you believing that CRT is going to do damage to your child, well, you're just a racist white person who doesn't understand, or you're just an uneducated person who doesn't have any idea about the intellectual, uh, the intellectual analysis that went into this most ridiculous, ridiculous historical account to change our country. But if you go to Google and if you go to Twitter and if you go to Facebook, all of that is okay. They won't ban that. In fact, they won't even ban. The um, Iranian ayatollahs or the mullahs that, that say they want to destroy Israel and wipe it off the face of the earth. They won't ban them for even talking about the Jewish people in such derogatory terms. You can't even imagine. I think there was somewhere near 4 million derogatory tweets towards uh, the Jewish state and the Jewish people on Twitter that was actually tallied up in this one report that I, uh, that I had uh, been a part of. It's unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable to me. Yet it's these very platforms, these very platforms 
that drive the narrative. Right now, if just talk to your kids, do you think your children are learning more off of these social media platforms and YouTube as well um, than they are on television? I mean, are they actually picking up the newspapers or do they get their news and their news feeds from Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, um, and all of those other social media platforms that mean so much to them, like TikTok, right? which is, I still believe, controlled by the Chinese. Think about what is going on here. I want you to listen to this clip. This is Google CEO Sundar Pichai, and he's testifying on data collection. Just take a listen to this before uh, Congressman Goodlatte. Operating system sends Google information every few minutes, detailing the exact location of a smartphone within a few feet, the speed of movement of the phone, the altitude of the phone, sufficient to determine what floor of a building the phone is on, the temperature surrounding the phone and other readings? And if so, with Americans carrying their phones with them virtually at all times, doesn't the collection of this volume of detailed information really mean that Google is compiling information about virtually every movement an individual with a smartphone is making every hour of every day? Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, today, for any service we provide our users, uh, we go to great lengths to protect their privacy, and we give them transparency, choice, and control. Uh, Android is a powerful platform and, and provides smartphones for over 2 billion people. And as part of that, it depends on the applications users choose to use. Uh, if you're using a fitness application, which is detecting the number of steps you walk, you expect it to send that information. But it's a choice users make. We make it clear. And, and it depends on the use cases. So the, the answer to my question, my first question is yes. Is that correct? That the information that I cited uh, is gathered uh, by Google? It, if, if the, for Google services, uh, you have a choice of what information is collected and we make it transparent. Basically, you have no choice. Because of technology, because the way the world is right now, they're basically saying, look, you know, well, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to, although you're expected to, right? At your job, you're expected to have a cell phone. You want to be in touch. You want to have like these extra gadgets so you can do things because the world's moving. It's just different. Technology has evolved. But what we haven't been able to hone in on, what we haven't been able to do is balance out that technology ethically. We're just going haywire. We're saying, okay, okay, give us all this technology. Yet we're not thinking of the ramifications of the technology, how it's slowly changing our lives. Sundar Pichai knows very well that he is collecting all of our information, that when you have an Alexa inside your house, they can directly, they being the FBI or anybody else, and remember how they have abused, these institutions have abused their power, can go inside and listen to your full conversations. In fact, conversations may be collected doesn't mean someone's listening to them. Can they, I don't know, can they go back and rewind and say, oh, you know, I'm going to look at this. I want to go to this particular house. I wonder what they were saying on that day. Yeah, sure they can. Sure they can, because they've actually used some of these in courts of law, you know, uh, things that had been recorded on Alexa. But we're not, what we're not thinking about either is the fact that, come on, do you expect your government to always do the right thing, to always be the government that you believed in? Look at what's happened to us over the last few years. I mean, what have we discovered? We've discovered that our institutions are not as forthright as they should be. In fact, I would agree with Attorney General um, Ken Paxton, who was on the show not too long ago. I hope you go there and listen to his podcast because it was phenomenal that he's never been more afraid of his government than he is at this time. That is coming from the attorney general of the state of Texas. Never been more afraid of the government than he is at this time. And when you hear Congressman Goodlot asking the CEO, Sundar Pichai of Google, are you collecting everyone's data? Can you hone in on everyone and anyone on this planet? And not only that, they control of all of our advertising. They control our ability to post stories. And if they don't like it, guess what they tell us? Guess what? We want that story down. They've actually done this, or we're going to cut all your advertising out. It doesn't fit our parameters. 
That's what they do. And now think about this. We're living in a world where it's like China, right? Like the Chinese Communist Party, it's like a credit system. It's like, oh, you were really good. So I'm going to let you do a little bit more on Twitter. And we don't, and they don't do it overtly. It's kind of inadvertently, right? It's algorithms. They reward you. You know, I was talking to someone who worked at YouTube and well, they no longer work there. They were a former whistleblower, I guess a former employee, a whistleblower. And they would say that they've set up these algorithms so that when your kids are actually watching these videos, right, that they reward them. So if you have an eight-year-old and they're watching videos and they get really excited and they're playing Minecraft, 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 they're going to give them something a little bit more, something above their age range that's going to entice them to continue to use the product, right? We are all being used this way. That's what social media is doing. I think we are on the cusp of a new world, right? We're in the middle of it, so we're not really seeing it. Where is it going to go? Where, where does this lead to? The one thing as Americans is that we have to be solid on our principles. We cannot give up, not for technology, not for anything else. We cannot give up those essential beliefs in our freedom and liberty. And that's what I'm really afraid of. I'm, I'm very afraid that this kind of aggressive bullying by uh, these technology giants are fundamentally changing our society and who we are and what we believe in. That as much freedom as we have, we're also exposing ourselves. I mean, what if I'm doing this podcast right now and some, you know, FBI agent who doesn't like me because he's a big Biden supporter, you know, start saying that I'm a threat, right? You know, could have like some kind of, uh, you know, report on me. How do we know this isn't already happening? Remember, it's President Joe Biden and his administration that are more terrified of American citizens they, that they call radicals, you know, and you've created this whole montage, a narrative about American citizens who are going to create the biggest problems for America if we don't find them out. He wants you to report your family members. He wants you to let them know, the FBI know if anybody's posting anything that seems to contradict the narrative. Wasn't it Joe Biden and his administration that just recently said that January 6th insurrection is the worst attack in America? I mean, since like, I don't know, the Civil War? Uh, what about World War II? And by the way, that that so-called insurrection on January 6th, I was down there that day. I was walking around in the crowds. I wasn't there when it happened on Capitol Hill. I didn't actually see that. And I think what happened was wrong. But I wouldn't call that a planned insurrection. I would call it a bunch of people who really got out of hand. And a really terrible thing occurred. Really tragic and terrible thing. Don't let this disinformation campaign by these people by the leftists, by these Democrats, change who we are. You know, we know the truth. You know the truth in your own heart. I know the truth when I cover a story. You know when something stinks to high heaven and you know when something, something is actually right, when you actually feel that you're doing the right thing. Don't turn away from the right thing. Don't let, you know, Sundar Pichai and Jack Dorsey and... You know, these guys that are running these big tech giants, don't let them dictate your life and cut through all the bullshit. Honestly, you have to. And you can't be afraid to stand up. That's what all of our forefathers have done. You know, there is something, there's nothing more precious, I believe, than our First Amendment freedoms, than our liberty. Once we lose that, folks, we have lost this country. That is an absolute fact. Once we lose that, we lose everything. That's why this is so important. That's why this is worth fighting for. I want you to listen to um, one of the people I like least on the planet. Um, and it's Brian Stetler <laughs> from CNN. And this, this is a person I would love, I would just absolutely love to have sent Brian Stetler back in time 
to, uh, you know, to the USSR. This is how he justifies censorship. The vast majority of people can agree that disinformation about, let's say, the pandemic is unhealthy. It's harmful. So how can that harm be reduced? Well, big tech platforms say they are removing lies about vaccines and stamping out Stop the Steal BS and QAnon cult content. Now, do these private companies have too much power? Sure. And many people would say, yes, of course they do. But reducing a liar's reach is not the same as censoring freedom of speech. He is such an idiot. And he actually believes that. He actually believes that. You know, we're allowed to question. That is our job. Our job is to say, well, wait a minute. How, how, what is this vaccine? Has this been approved by the FDA? Um, how is this vaccine made? What are alternatives for medicine when I have COVID? Is there another opinion? I'd like two or three opinions on this. You know, what can I do? By the way, Dr. Anthony Fauci, why did you say masks would do no good? And then you said uh, masks were the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then you said we need to wear three masks. What the heck is going on here? What is going on with you? Why do you keep pandering to everybody that's around you? Why can't we ask questions, Brian? You're working for CNN. You should be asking questions all the time. This should be your job. But he's nothing but a gossip columnist. He's a gossip columnist that got a little bit famous and the fame has gone into his head and he thinks he knows as much as Jack Dorsey and Sundar Pichai and Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos about how you should live your life and what he and he should be protecting you from, right? He's the protection police. It's an embarrassment, actually. It's really an embarrassment. I Brian Stetler is an embarrassment. And it reminds me of like somebody who never went anywhere, never knew anything, and is just rambling about things he knows nothing about. Let me give you an example. In Pakistan, and I covered many stories in Pakistan. Um, the intelligence services, the ISI, it's they're called their inter-services intelligence service, much like our CIA and um actually very adept. Uh, control the narrative many times that not only do their intelligence agencies, but their military. So in Pakistan, for example, if the government wants a particular story out, they are going to push that particular story and the journalists are going to be afraid to do anything else. They're going to be afraid because either they're going to be ostracized or they're going to be threatened. That's what we don't want here. The same thing happens in Mexico. Guess what happens in Mexico? Except it's not so much the government, right? It's the drug cartels. You write about Los Zetas, and then all of a sudden, you know, Sinaloa is so upset that you wrote about Los Zetas, even if you just told a straight story about how many people were killed, right? So Sinaloa will murder you. That is not what we want here in the United States. And we certainly won't, don't want Don Lamont or Brian Stetler telling us what to do with our lives or Oliver Darcy, or any of those other folks at CNN, like Jim Acosta, who basically make their money by beating their chests and then writing a book. I'm going to close out with this, um, this soundbite. This is, this is absolutely brilliant. This is Senator Ted Cruz, and he's confronting Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey on Twitter banning. And then I'm going to fill you in on what I'm going to be doing this weekend in Texas. Why am I in Texas? Well, I'm here because of CPAC. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Listen to this. When Twitter is editing and censoring and silencing the New York Post, the, four, the newspaper with the fourth highest circulation in the country, and Politico, one of the leading newspapers in the country, is Twitter behaving as a publisher when it's deciding what stories reporters are allowed to write and, and publish and what stories they're not? No, and that account was not suspended. Um, it fell afoul of the hacked materials policy. Um, we realized that there was an error in that policy and the enforcement. Hold, hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm literally looking hours. at the tweet from Twitter that says your account has been locked. You're, you're telling me that this is not an that's accurate. A, that's a lock. That's a lock and can be unlocked when you delete. The I, I understand that you have the star chamber power. Your answer is always, well, once we silence you, we can choose to allow you to speak. They operate as publishers. And the reason Jack Dorsey and the reason that was such a brilliant question and answer between Senator Cruz and Jack Dorsey is because he basically got Jack Dorsey to say, well, they are acting as publishers, right? 
they're they're editing, they're deciding what you can look at, what you can hear, what you can see. That's what they are deciding. I mean, even Politico for crying out loud, just because they didn't want that story that didn't go with their narrative. That's why we've got to remove Section 230. We we should not give Twitter or any of these massive behemoth social media giants any leeway, right? If you're going to act like a publisher, you should be able, I mean, we should be able to sue you. You've actually made those decisions to act like a publisher. It's not like they're stopping a crime. They're not stopping human trafficking or child predators online. That we get. That all of us can agree on. What they want to do is stop you from having a conversation. They do not want you to gather. They do not want you to be able to share ideas. They want their ideas to be the ones that you hear. Why? Because once they inundate you with all of this disinformation, you all of a sudden build up these questions, right? It was just like President Trump. People were like, oh my gosh, is he really working for the Russians? I mean, how ridiculous. We proved that. We proved that he did not. Absolutely not that it was a complete fallacy, a complete lie made up by the biggest and best liars in the world. People trained to do this on foreign enemies, and they did this against the American people. And you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about James Clapper. I'm talking about John Brennan. I'm talking about James Comey. I'm talking about Andrew McCabe. I'm talking about all the people that worked for him. And they targeted this president, and they're still targeting him, and they're targeting everyone else around him. We are operating worse than Pakistan. Because at least Pakistan's open about it. I mean, we've seen that on the news. We're trying to pretend we're something different. We better be something different. We better get back to the basics. And let me tell you this. We have to stop being the silent majority, folks. We have to start speaking up. We cannot be silent. We have to do what President Trump did. This whole lawsuit against Google, Twitter, and Facebook is a reason why he's doing it. And it's not about drawing attention to himself. It's not. Uh, maybe a little, right? To get that information out there. But it's about exposing them. It's about exposing them and getting the truth out to the American people. Once he has that lawsuit, he can have disclosure. He can ask for information. It's going to be a battle, but he's going to get it. And we're going to get it. That's what's important here is that you know the truth. What's important is that we stand up for one another, too, and we stand up for our country. We cannot forget to do that. Look, we used to pride ourselves in having a free media and one that was, for the most part, objective. And now we have a media that's for the basically been sold out. We have a social media platforms that have also sold out. You know, if we hope to stay a free nation, if we hope to continue the path that our forefathers set out for us in that constitution and that declaration of independence, then we have to stand up and fight. No one else is going to do it for us. And I'm not talking about going out in the streets and acting crazy. And I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about not being afraid to defend your rights. Who cares if someone like Jack Dorsey, who's such a bonehead, you know, wants to ostracize us? I don't really care. You know, we can't be afraid to speak the truth. That's what we've got to do. Every single one of us. That's why I'm out here every single day because I know we have each other's backs. I know that together we can make a difference. I know that you and I live in the greatest nation on earth. And God help anyone that tries to take that away from us. Thank you so much for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. Remember, go to sarahacarter.com. That's sarahacarter.com. Oh, I was going to tell you about CPAC. I'm here this weekend at CPAC. President Trump is going to be speaking on Sunday. I am going to be covering that. I'm also going to be speaking on Saturday here at CPAC with Gordon Chang. I'm going to get him on the show on Monday, I hope, um, to talk about our panel. Um, Ambassador Rick Grinnell and many, many others, Matt Schlapp, Mercedes Schlapp, and everyone that's going to be out here this weekend is getting ready for CPAC Part 2 in one of the greatest states of our union, Texas. I hope you all join us. I know Fox Nation will be uh, airing the shows live. And on Monday night, Sean Hannity and I will have a very special segment straight from CPAC. And we're just going to let the American people talk. 
We're not going to try to direct the narrative. We are going to let people talk. And, and that's what I'm here for. Thank you again for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. Um, I hope you join me again next week. Join us at CPAC. Love you and God bless. Frank Ziller, I am so happy to actually meet you. Tunnel to Towers is I, an organization, a foundation that I, I am so proud being a sponsor for the Sarah Carter Show. So thank you so much. Talk to me about the impact of the foundation and what you've been able to do to date since uh, starting the organization. Well, never in a million years did we think we'd be doing all the work that we're doing. You know, we just want to make, make sure that we honored the sacrifice and never forgot what happened on 9 11, not just to Stephen, but all those that perished that day. But you know what? It's just 10 years ago, we delivered our first smart home. From there, we realized there's such a great need. You know, these great men and women are coming back with these injuries that they would never have survived before on the battlefield. And they need specially adapted smart homes and they and they deserve to have a mortgage free. And that's what we've been doing ever since. So, you know, to date, we've done over 250 of those mortgage free homes, whether it's for smart home recipients, Gold Star families or fallen first responders, the families that leave young kids behind. And this year alone, we're going to deliver 200 of those uh, mortgage free homes. So we're very uh, proud of that uh, work. And they're not inexpensive, each one of them not inexpensive. So we count on the goodness of America to join us. T2T.org. That's T2T.org. It's only $11 a month. It's up to every single one of us to do our part to help those that were willing to give everything to protect us and our families.